We can also try to um, find a geometric interpretation. So if we take the variance, for example, the variance of x of these data set here, it's indicating how the data spreads in x direction. Yeah? The variance in y is indicating how it spreads in y direction. So the variances are always telling us how the data is spread in our coordinate directions. Yeah? But if you look at this data set, um, this spread and this spread, even though it's pro probably the same number or a comparable number, um, there is still something else going on. It's not described by the variances. Um, and that, uh, um, so for example, when I'm saying the, the uh, variance is always giving us the information along the coordinate axis, that's something that we can change. We can change our coordinate system and the variances will, will be different. Um, so let's, uh, for example, take a look at this data that I showed you. So we start to, at the top left. I also give the covariance matrix here, and the diagonal elements are the covariances, uh, the variances in X and in Y, and the off-diagonal elements are the covariance, which is the same value because covariance of X and Y is the same as covariance of Y and X. Yeah. So, um, If I now rotate my coordinate system by 90 degrees to the left, I end up here. So I, what I plot here as red and green arrows is um, indicating the spread in the, in the direction of largest spread and smallest spread. And of course, these vectors are also rotated around here, the, zero, the, the data is centered um, so if I rotate this, what you note here is that the variance elements just switch because I basically ex exchanged um, the, um, the spread in X and Y. And these two elements, so the covariance is telling us how is a point changing in y if I scatter it in x. This are the same numbers here, just with a negative sign because um, this rotation is equivalent to just um, having the data mirrored at the um, y-axis. So I'm multiplying the y values with negative, yeah, and that makes the covariance negative. And now we can also think of, if we can rotate, we can also try to find a rotation of our coordinate system where the off-diagonal elements vanish. That's always possible. You know this. Yeah? That's the, that's the uh, principal component, component transformation, uh, principal axis um, transformation. What's the English word? Hauptachsen transformation. Huh? Yeah, but it's if you if you think of uh, the um, um, the. Uh, so we have this in the rigid body that if you yes, exactly. Like transformation, then it's, it's called principal axis transformation. Principal axis transformation. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and here I can try to find a coordinate system where the off diagonal off diagonal elements vanish, and there are two possible solutions, and these are the two. And what we see here is that in the one solution, the data, the, these uh, um, red arrow indicating the maximum spread is parallel to the y-axis and here it's parallel to the x-axis. Um, actually, there are four possibilities because I can switch direction. Um, now, if the off-diagonal elements are zero, that means there is no mixture terms between x and y. 
And if you look at the data, if you take an, an, some data point here and move some delta to the right, um, there are about the same number of points with a positive delta y and a negative delta y. So there is no correlation. Yeah? There is no trend in the data if I move along the x-axis. So the um, covariance vanishes because we have positive times times positive values adding up positive times negative values and this vanishes and here the same and again since between here and here this is just a rotation by 90 degrees this switches just the two um, elements along the diagonal um, now Yes. So we need to be aware that um, the choice of our coordinate system, of course, um, affects the, the, uh, the variances and the covariances. So 